Warm welcome to each and every one of you. My name is Paul André Duroshi. I am the Archbishop of Gatineau. Today is Tuesday of the second week of Advent, and as part of a series, I want to present the readings of the Mass uh, for today and to say a few words about them. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. This beginning of chapter 40 marks, you could say, the beginning of a whole new section in the book of Isaiah. Often specialists speak of a second Isaiah. These, the text we're reading today was uh, probably written 160 years after the end of chapter 39. Uh, what was in chapter 39? In chapter 39, there was a pronouncement by the prophet Isaiah to King Hezekiah that the day would come when Babylon would become a powerful enemy. It would conquer Israel and take away its people and its riches. He's prophesying the exile. And after uh, chapter 39, there's a we could say a silence. There, there's a pause of 160 years until we hear again uh, from a prophet who is also writing under the name of Isaiah, obviously not the same man, but I guess maintains some link, some familiarity, part of a school, you could say, of the thinking of the prophet Isaiah. And here he's writing towards the end of the exile when the kingdom of Babylon is really going through very hard times and there's a new empire that is arising, the Persian Empire under King Cyrus. And this becomes an occasion for the prophet to speak about hope. And chapter 40 is very different in tone from the first 40 chapters. The first, the first 39 chapters of Isaiah speak very much of warning, of God punishing the people because of the people's infidelity. There are here and there, um, uh, you could say, intimations of some hope, but overall the message is, is quite harsh, quite hard. It's, He's calling the people to conversion, to repentance. But here in chapter 40, after the people have been in exile for all these years, uh, probably 50, 60, 70 years of exile, here he gets up. And what are the words that begin chapter 40? Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Cry to her that she is served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In, in other words, the sentence is finished. Now you are going to be freed. You will rediscover freedom. Those who know Handel's Messiah know that these words are the first words in that great oratorio, and they're, they're set to such beautiful music. It really speaks of the comforting voice of God. So, in this second Isaiah, there, there's, in these first few verses, we can hear kind of the vocation call. In, in the first Isaiah, in chapter 6 of Isaiah, the first prophet to be called Isaiah, there was a vo vocation call. Isaiah experienced God's presence in the temple, and that experience was one of, uh, for him, of terror and of fear because he felt he was a sinful man, and he's part of a sinful people, the text says. And an angel in this vision takes a, a coal and burns his lips with it and says, now you are purified. Uh, and God says, uh, whom shall I send to my people? And Isaiah says, I'll go. And what shall I say? And God says, prophesy doom, prophesy destruction, prophesy that there is no hope for this people because they have turned away from the covenant. It's a, it's a message of doom. But here at the beginning of chapter 40, there's, there's also a kind of a convert, um, vocation narrative and we, we hear this uh, about halfway through today's text. A voice cry, says, cry out, you know, a voice, God's voice, saying to the prophet, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? And then the, it's interesting. It's one way of reading it. There are various ways of reading it, but I like this way of reading it. The, prophets, the prophet responds to God, well, what shall I cry? All, all the people 
are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. Grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are like grass, withered grass. He, he's kind of saying, what, what shall I cry to the people? This people has lost all hope, has lost all liveliness. This people is dead, in a sense, is what the prophet is saying. And God answers, yes, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. It's as if God is saying, my word can work wonders. My word can give life to this people again. And this is what this word is. And it continues. So get up onto a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the seed of Judah, of Judah, here is your God. Get up and proclaim. He's he, the, the God's voice is speaking to all of Jerusalem, but in a special way to this prophet, saying, get up and proclaim this. God is coming. God is here. God is coming with might as a powerful conqueror. He is going to free this people, is what the message is. And notice that. The word here, he, he says he calls Zion and uh, Jerusalem the herald of good tidings. Good tidings, good news. The Greek, in Greek, evangelium, uh, evangel, gospel. This is the good news. It's the first time in the Bible that that expression is used, good news. Um, some people say Isaiah is kind of the fifth evangelist uh, because here, particularly starting at chapter 40, it really is good news. It really is about God intervening to free the people, to bring them back to life. He, the first image is of God as a great king, but right away it continues. The prophet says, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, carry them in his bosom, gently lead the mother sheep. So this is a king unlike all other kings. God is a God of tender mercy, caring for the little ones, the lambs, uh, leading the mother sheep, those that are still nursing. There is a great, yes, tenderness and compassion in this description of God. This chapter 40 is, is a beautiful text of hope, of good news for us today, telling us that God wants to be involved in our lives to bring us his life, to renew us with compassion and with tenderness. And obviously Christians understood this as being realized in, in a most remarkable way in Jesus. And so when Jesus in today's gospel uh, is speaking with this, the disciples, he says to them, if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. Here Jesus is using this image of the shepherd that we've just heard in Isaiah to speak about God's care, concern for the little one. I find it's an ironic parable. You know, if you have a hundred sheep and one of them is astray, don't you leave the 99 on the mountain there to go look for the others? I imagine most shepherds would say, well, no, you don't. I mean, What's one, one measly lamb when you've got 99 to take care of? If I go after the one, I'll probably, something might happen to the other 99. No, I'll stay with the 99. That is common good sense. Well, what Jesus is saying is that God's sense is different from our good common sense. God will go after this one lost sheep and God will rejoice over finding the sheep, bringing the sheep back home. Isaiah, Isaiah's good news was about returning home. 
this good news of Jesus is that God wants to bring us back home through his son, Jesus Christ. Today, truly, is a word of good news for us. Let us receive it. Let us take it to heart. And in turn, let us become bearers of good news for the people around us. God bless.